1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 4. But in gaming, 4 ones is not the same as 4. What? Veterans of TCGs are used to a question like, would you rather deal 1 4 times, or 4 once? The answer, it depends based on the modifiers that are in play. Sometimes, 4 ones can be worth 8, or they could be worth 0. That's impossible. That's impossible. Who are you? No, no, folks, don't worry. I'm not here challenging math itself. Gaming certainly requires math and often pushes players to the limits of their ability to do it mentally. But there are many players whom Flesh and Blood might be their first of these type of games, or maybe they're coming from another game that doesn't have the same level of intricacy, stack triggers, or depth of interactions. Something that is crucial to success in Flesh and Blood is understanding the difference and how small interactions can change what would be otherwise straightforward math. So tonight, in another installment of the New Player and Old 2 series, I'm talking TCG math and how you can use it to your advantage. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and Go Again, a fabulous video cast focusing on all things Flesh and Blood. Thank you very, very much for tuning in tonight, talking TCG math, being aware of it, and applying it uh, to Flesh and Blood. Now, this episode of Go Again is sponsored by FabDB.net, which, in my opinion, is the hands-down best resource that we have as Flesh and Blood players. Uh, not only does FabDB.net serve as a card database, a collection manager, and a deck builder, you can also search thousands of player-submitted decks for ideas when, when you're stumped. It's what I personally use for research, my 3D crafting, and when building and maintaining my decks. Uh, I very much appreciate how easy it is to port over into TTS or Felt Table or to generate lists for tournaments. Uh, nearly all the features over there are available for free, but they do have a subscription service which offers an even enhanced experience. So if you haven't already, check out FabDB and make it a staple of your Fab experience. So tonight's video is inspired by a video that I made in the fall of 2021, specifically talking about the card Light It Up and the ruling around that card. Uh, so the question was, does its Fuse ability deal one damage for each equipment in play, or does it deal all that damage as one packet? Now, the answer from the official card clarification uh, was that it dealt it all as a single packet, right? So if you had four equipment, you wouldn't take four ones, you would take a packet of four. And the discussion was around that. And while I thought it was, yes, the correct ruling, uh, that that's actually not what the card said. So I, you know, go, go check out that video if you're more curious about that discussion. Uh, but either way, it kind of it fed into, uh, it was the inspiration for tonight, because in the comments of that video, a viewer commented, well, what you see here, one times four equals four. Uh, now, likely that was intended as a you know a, a bit of a, a bit of a snide comment, but but it is something that I've wanted to talk about since then because let's face it, that comment there, while true from a pure math standpoint, is unequivocally false in CCGs. Right? We deal with modifiers, extra damage, replacement effects, and and all sorts of things. Uh, so you know, two two great examples that that can point out how four ones and four are not the same thing are you know the recently banned card Ball Lightning as well as the card from the upcoming set Everfest, this rounds on me, right? So in the case where you have a ball lightning in play, you would want to deal four ones, right? Because those four ones could be a two and a two and a two and a two for eight. Whereas this rounds on me would make those four ones zero and zero and zero and zero, right? Very, very, very simple and straightforward uh, examples of, of TCG math. So, okay, great, I get it. Andrew, you've proven your point. What, why do we care, other than the fact that it's very interesting? F fair, fair enough. But th the question is, how can we use that to our advantage? And really what it boils down to is sideboarding, for, for, for the most part, where I see it as our advantage is sideboarding in flesh and blood. So as, as many of you are aware, we get uh, in classic constructed format, that is you get 80 cards to have everything that you sit down and bring to the table. Some of that's going to be equipment, but it leaves you roughly 10 to 13-ish slots, depending on how you build your deck, uh, to bring other cards, right, that you may not need to sit down with because you're required to start with 60 cards minimum in your deck. You can start with more, 
but you have that fluff there, right? So using it in sideboarding, how, how would I do that, right? Well, you have to know the meta, right? Right. The meta, meta being a term of knowing the current matchups and what people are playing, right? So if you, for example, sit down versus a ninja deck and they're running Kadachis, you are going for the you are because of course they're going to run Kadachis because the card is amazing, right? You're going to know that you're going to be facing largely multiple attacks. If you are sitting down versus, again, I realize Ball Lightning has just recently been banned, and rightly so because of kind of what we're talking about tonight. But you know, if you were to sit down versus a a Lexi player who, and granted, at the time you're sideboarding, you're not going to know whether they're necessarily on Lightning or or Ice at the time, right? But the point is, if you're sitting down against somebody who you know is going to go wide, you might want to do something that can reduce damage. And maybe if you are Lexi, for example, and you know that you can deal multiple attacks, and you know that somebody's going to have a hard time blocking or will not block as much, you can slot in something like a backfill, whatever the backfill for Ball Lightning may be in the future, you can go that way as well. Right, so let's look at a couple of practical examples, right? We know that what Prism likes to do is stabby, stabby, stab with her auras, right? Her spectral shields will come with, with Luminaris. Her spectral shields and her auras can all stab you for one. So slotting in something like this rounds on me is a great way to help prevent that damage because yes, they're going to get a card out of it, which helps their next round. But if they're looking at, you know, if you're looking at effectively erasing five to six attacks that would normally have otherwise cost you one, uh, that's that's a big impact, right? Whereas if you were playing this rounds on me versus a guardian, for example, who's usually trying to throw a big swing or a big attack, you're probably not going to sideboard that in because it just doesn't give you the payoff, right? And then there are many more examples uh, as such, but being aware that one times four does not equal four, and that swinging for four doesn't necessarily equal the same as four ones is very important to helping us make those type of decisions in flesh and blood. So honestly, that's that's really my my piece tonight. That's going to be something that I'm, especially with Ball Lightning recently having gone away, and the wide decks may be under a little more pressure now, or at least the traditional one uh, being being Lightning Briar. Uh, something I'll be looking forward into Everfest is is how how that develops and, and what other opportunities are out there. We know this round on me is out there, of course, um, but will there be something on the flip side? I don't know. We'll have to see, and we'll have to see how we can use that to our advantage to build our decks and and you know make our sideboard choices, sideboard choices, and and act accordingly. So anyway, that's my piece for tonight. Really, just you know making the case for you know the many most of you guys who are watching this knew that already. Um, but again, it's something that's that's great to be aware of. So anyway, folks, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Uh, make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, and if nothing else, folks, go Commando.